All right, module two, state three properties of a well-designed algorithm. There are so many. It's precise, has a flow, it is um, unambiguous, termination. I think they have about six, so any one of them would be work, would work. Describe the problem analysis stage of the problem solving process. You would want to say that um, you have to gather information about the process that would help determine the root causes as well as the as well as the general inputs, processes, and outputs. Uh, the steps taken to convert a temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius as follows. Step 1. Subtract 32 from the given temperature. Step 2. Multiply the result in step 1 by 5. Step 3. Divide the result in step 2 by 9. Write an algorithm that will prompt a user for a numeric value representing a temperature in Fahrenheit. Convert the temperature to degrees Celsius and print the message. It's cold. Oh wait, it's only that little bit of space to give him? Wow. So I guess I have to write it really short. Yes, that. Print. Enter the temperature. Read him. Step one is sub subtracted. See if I give one temperature. Probably I just had to put it in one line. Okay. Answer is equal to 32. No, temp take away 32. Multiplied by 5. And then we divide in that whole thing by 9. And then print the message. It's cold if the temperature in degrees Celsius is less than 17. So if answer is less than 17, then print it is whole. And the answer. Yep. Mm -hmm. Three marks. That's a lot to write for three marks, boy. But why would I stop them? Consider the following algorithm. If num is greater than zero, if num is equal to two, print first as print second, end if, end if, and print third. I'd write the output of the algorithm when num is equal to zero. Okay. If num is greater than zero, then you do this. If it's not greater than zero, then you do the anything. So this will be third. If num is equal to one, that means it is greater than zero. So yes, we will do this next part now. If it's equal to two, print first, else print second. So it'll print second, and then it'll print third. Because no matter what happens, it's always going to print third. And next one, if num is equal to two, is greater than zero, it'll print first and third. Nice. And that's what we will do then. <laughs> Alright, a company is conducting a poll on its employees' favorite sport. If 50% or more of the employees vote for any one activity, the company will have an event. Employees are asked to select one of four choices cricket, football, cycling, and none. Alright, there's a standard question that they would normally ask to determine who's the winner. If cricket or cycling, so if cricket, football, or cycling is not an employee's favorite sport, then the employee must vote. So they have to choose some, something. Assuming that 3,000 employees are polled and all votes are valid, write an algorithm that accepts the vote of each employee and determines whether an event will be held or not. So whether an event will be held or not. So we're checking for one event. Checking for all events. Um, so they're voting. So if 50% or more of the employees vote for any one activity, the company will have an event. Will that event be any one of those? Okay, now hold on. So once we get 50% or more in any one of them, it's considered an event. How do we check for 50%? We have to check to see if it is more than um, 1500. Because 1500 would be 50%, then. Yep. Mm, the algorithm should print sport event. Yes. If the company will host the event and sport event no if the company will not host the event okay so they give us a lot of space here uh, they give us fairly enough i wonder you see with this this one here this one here i don't know if they, we didn't have enough space to create variables so but i'll put the variables just for being clear say variable would be um vote v for vote and um c for counter that adds you and we will see total if 50 percent of my employees vote for any one activity any one of the activities all right so then we just have a general total once the general total cross 1500 it wouldn't matter okay start print no we just had to start a loop one time just have to start the loop one time or c is equal to zero oh this is not C programming as an algorithm. Or C is equal to 1, 2, 3,000. Do. I want to print a print, print, just normal print because it's an algorithm. Print. 
enter your vote. Now read V. After I read the vote, I have to check to see if vote is equal to. Wait, do I need to keep track of each individual on my? If cricket, football, or cycling, that I'm going to, they must, they must vote none. No, they don't want me to keep track of every single one, so I don't have to. So I could do I could do a one shot for all if vote is equal to um cricket or vote is equal to football or vote is equal to cycling, then I'll carry up total is equal to total plus one. So I carry up the total. Um and if they don't choose any one of these, they have to vote none. So I'll just put next if if vote is equal to none. I don't need to keep the none total, you know. Yeah, we don't need to keep the none total. It wouldn't matter if we if we keep track of it or not because they have to vote none anyhow. It'll enter their vote. If the vote is cricket, football, or cycling, we carry up the total. Once they carry up the total, this for loop could end now because we'll keep reading their vote, carrying up the total. And then you now want to say if total is greater than 1500, then print, print sport event dash yes. Sport event dash yes. Else print sport event dash and then we could stop here. Okay, so let's see if all the criteria has been met. 3,000 employees are polled and all votes are valid. Right hand algorithm not accept the votes of each employee. Right, so we accept the vote of each employee. After we accept the vote of each employee, we check to see if it's cricket, football, or cycling. If it's any one of those three, we carry up the total by one, which is what they said. And then at the end of the follow loop, we check and see if the total is greater than 1500, and that will give you a yes or no. Okay, mm -hmm. that's 12 marks. Yeah, I can see 12 marks inside there somehow. I'm not too sure about the marking for it, but that is the answer. All right, let's three types of control structures. This is easy selection, sorry, sequential selection or iteration. At the end of the school year, and Mr. Smith, a teacher, would like to purchase pizza for his students. There are 12 slices in a large pizza, and each student will be given one slice. Write an algorithm which prompts the teacher for the number of students in the class, then prints the number of large pizzas you will have to purchase and the number of slices that would remain once each student is given a slice okay so the variables that we would need would definitely be number of students in the class number of students right number of students printing number of pizzas and for the number of pizzas and the number of slices that would remain if each student is given one slice okay so logically we first thing we have to do is prompt the teacher for the number of students so we will print enter the number of students and we'll read numstad right so we read the number of students after we read the number of students we now have to determine if there are 12 slices and each student must be given one slice you have to divide that number by 12 okay 12 into that number. No, if there's a remainder, we wouldn't know. Okay, there are multiple ways I could think of doing this. Let's see if we could work out a straightforward way. We could say um, number of pizzas is equal to number of students divided by 12. I'll get to the number of pizzas. No, because the number of students I have is more than 12. I mean, every number of students I have is... Oh no, you would. Let me say you have 24 students. That means it'll be two pizzas. If you have 25 students, you will get two pizzas still. Oh, you had to use mod. Okay, so the number of pizzas I have to get would be the number of students divided by 12 for sure. But then the number of slices I remain and S will be um num stud number of students mod 12 it'll be 12 minus the mod the mod value okay right so it'll be 12 minus the mod of number 12 because the modulus will give you the remainder of slices that you'll have extra and then when you subtract from 12 you'll know how much you have left back so let's see if we say 25 students 25 students divided by 12 will give you two pizzas no you would you would need three pizzas yeah so that means we had to work out the mod and see if the mod is not equal to zero okay all right logic now would say okay we would do this calculation calculation still but we'll only do this calculation if um num right. number of students mod 12 is not equal to zero that means if it don't get a flush um if it don't get a flush calculation then the number of pizzas has to go up by one so we will we will calculate the number of extra slices that they have to get number of slices that would remain so this is the number of slices that would remain and then n is equal to n plus one because that means you def that once this once the once you divide divide and it didn't get zero that means you need to have an extra pizza for sure so we calculate the number of extra slices and we just carry up the n by one so that means you're going to buy an extra pizza because the number of pizzas that you need will not be two anymore it'll be three and you will have certain amount of slices after all 
right? Okay. That's all. Yeah. Alright, so let's test it now. 25 divided by 2 will tell me I need 2 pizzas. But I'll have an extra student because it's 24, 24 remainder 1. So that remainder 1 now, after now calculate how much slices will be left back, which is 12 minus the remainder, which is the number mod 12, which will give me a remainder 1. So that number of slices I'll be left back will be 11. And then I carry the number of pizzas, so that means we're going to buy 3 pizzas. But we're going to have 11 slices left back because this is 11 slices. All right, cool. Sounds correct. We had to print stuff. So now we will print number of pizzas would be um, N. And then print number of slices left back would be NS. Okay. And then stop. All right. Any questions there? Do you see the logic? Did you get that logic? All that for five marks, boy? That's, that's plenty. That's, that's a lot. That's right. Okay. Update the following algorithm so that it uses bounded iteration to find and print the sum of all the squares. All the number of the squares of all numbers between 0 and 1000 inclusive. inclusive. So we want to use a bounded iteration, which is a for loop. That's a lot of space for a simple five mark question. That's a lot of lines. Like they could have gave some more lines here, or they could have gave some more lines. Anyhow, thanks for the lines. We will use them wisely. So we want to go between 0 and 1000 inclusive. So that'll be 4 i is equal to. 0 to 1000 do that makes it bounded and then sum for all the even numbers is zero or even number you know sum is equal to print the sum of all the squares so we have to find the square first square is equal to i multiplied by i and then sum is equal to sum plus square and then you kind of i by two so i is equal to i plus one because when you carry up the i by one the for loop here is going to so we change the i from zero to one and then when it changes to one the for loop is going to change it to two because the for loop shall will to take to iterate to the next value of i okay yeah so you're leaving the i is equal to i plus one because if we put it to two it will carry it up to two and then the for loop will carry it up to three and we don't want that to happen so we got to carry up i by one each time because what you're basically doing is forcing the i to go up by one so that the for loop will carry it up by next one so it will in effect be two so that'll be n4 and then print i print the sum sorry corner to find and print the sum of the squares of all numbers between 0 and 1000 inclusive yeah right, so that's the update there all that extra space was not necessary but hey thanks whoa uh 12 mark question to to finish of the module let's see all right a language course with 30 students who has a written examination and an oral examination students pass if they obtain a mark greater than 50 write an algorithm that will accept the mark for the written examination and the mark for the oral examination for every student print how many students pass each examination print the average scores for all students in the written examination and the oral examination all right this is going to take some doing so let's start variables probably going to have to update these variables as we go along course has 30 students as a written examination or oral examination so we're going to have our counter definitely because we have to do this 30 times we have to accept a written mark wm for written mark and om for oral mark accept the mark for the written accept the mark for the oral for every student print how many students pass the pass each examination so written pass and oral pass all of these equal to zero written pass oral pass for the average scores for all students in a written examination so written out w out and the oral which will be oral out i'll find the averages first yep all right good all right now we could start so we're starting with our for loop four c is equal to one two thirty do what are we doing each time we ask any mark for the written examination and the oral examination print enter written mark then oral mark and then we will read wm and om read the written mark and the oral mark if wm is greater than 50 then written pass is equal to written pass plus one and then and then if um om oral mark is greater than 50 then oral pass is greater than oral pass plus one and then equal, equal so we carry those up um print the average scores for all students in the written examination and the oral examination so this loop will just keep going over and over and over and now we're going to do the averages which is w average is equal to written pass divided by c and o average is equal to o. No, they want the average scores for all students oh, so it's all students my bad so we are, we are supposed to add them up even if they pass or fail yeah what you're saying, Tyan? What's up? Oh, my sir. 
Okay, so when the if finishes, whenever we do the pass or not, we will say um, W total is equal to W total plus WM and O total is equal to O total plus OM. Because we need to get the totals in order to find the average. And then we could end the 4 and now find the averages by taking the W total divided by C and the O total divided by C. Right? So I'll put in those now, W total and O total, right? So all those variables there, print the average scores for all students in the written exam, right? So now we have to print stuff. So my prints will be print. Did they ask to print out the averages to print how many students pass each examination? Okay, so written past would be, well, back, come on, come on, WP, total, it does WP, right? Print oral pass would be OP, print, what else I need to print? Average. Averages. Print the average scores for all students. W average, W av, and print oral average. Or, or, or average. Oh, average for all students. This here kind of weird. The average scores for all students in written and in the oral examination. I guess they mean separate. Average for written and the average in the oral. It had to be separate. Then stop. 12 marks. All yours. Did I leave out anything? Nope. Looks right to me.